Series A Taskmaster Grand Final. <laughs> the wait is over at the end of tonight's show. Someone will take home this majestic trophy, forged from the bones of Adonis, and go home a champion. But which of our battle-scarred five would it be? Please give them a hero's welcome for the final time. Ian Sterling! <laughs> Joe Thomas! <laughs> Lou Sanders! Paul Sinha! And Sean Gibson! <laughs> and here, you know I love him really, it's... Woo! Little Alex Hall! Oh, that's great. Do you, do you genuinely? No! no. <laughs> Thank you. Well, today, Greg, uh, I'm actually not going to do any talking. I'm just going to do this. <laughs> well, I'm supposed to react to that now. Can you react however you want, Greg. I think you like it. Yes. Well, normally, I would have to try and find something funny to say about that. Mm -hmm. But on this occasion, I'm just going to do... This. <laughs> so, good. We both look pretty. Thank you. What have we got for the final prize task, Alex? They have to bring in the best thing that will actually change your life for the better the most. So, you... <laughs> you will judge who has brought in the thing that will actually change your life for the better the most and give them five golden points for it. The winner of tonight's episode will take home all the things that will actually change your life for the better the most and hopefully the things will actually change their life for the better the most, OK? <laughs> so, here we go. Uh, Lou Sanders, how are you going to change my life for the better the most? Now, I don't think you're going to like this one, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's an appointment with um, my spiritual healer, Jill in the Pyrenees. <laughs> And she's so magic, honestly. She can tap into people. I asked her about you. She said, yeah, great guy, real great guy. It is a gift voucher for Jill, a healer in the Pyrenees. So you, you don't go to the Pyrenees, because energy works through space and time. Obviously, yeah. that's science. Yes. So... It goes without saying. Jill in the Pyrenees. Lives in the Pyrenees. You just WhatsApp audio call her. If it has helped you, I think that's wonderful. Mm. It really has. But Jill in the Pyrenees has already said that she thinks I'm a really great guy, so I probably don't need any healing. But it's for one me. of these idiots. <laughs> Ian, what have you bought to change oh, my life? I've got the greatest invention I've ever come across, and that is a toilet stool. Here it is. Yeah. The squatty toilet stool. Yeah. <laughs> As human beings, we're meant to oh, squat when we poo. Yeah. yeah. You see? Because that opens the colon up. Yes, it does. When you sit at a 90-degree angle... <laughs> yes, it, yes, it does. Yes. It does, yeah. Very and Alex will also tell you, when you sit at a 90 degrees, your colon is... Kinked. Well, it doesn't allow your body to come out of continence mode and go into elimination mode. Exactly. <laughs> Wait till you get your knees up, you will eliminate that next year. <laughs> we'll talk more about this afterwards. Yes, OK. <laughs> Paul. I went shopping for my mum on Oxford Street at Christmas and I found this item and it's so good that I bought it for my mum, presented it to her at Christmas and on Boxing Day went round and stole it. <laughs> <laughs> It's basically an electronic massage pad and it absolutely improves your life because when you get to my age, you're sore after doing anything, after having a poo. <laughs> if you don't believe how good it is, Alex is going to demonstrate it on you. Yes, now. I do have it here. What? Uh, yes, there it is. OK, <laughs> you want to see it in action? Ooh! <laughs> the great thing about it, it works on any part of your body. Oh, put it on your bowels. Yeah. <laughs> on your bowels? Oh, yeah. <laughs> really nice, Paul. Sean, you gonna relax my colon or make me poo? Funnily enough, yes. Um, I've brought some pills. <laughs> and these aren't just any pills. These are actually called miracle pills. OK. I've, I've tried them. You can eat anything you want when you've had one of these pills and it will taste really sweet and like the nicest thing you've ever had. It's true. I literally ate four lemons. Yeah. Tasted amazing. Really? Yep. They, they activate the sweet receptors resulting in the perception of sweet taste. They, they had to physically 
take the lemons off me in case well, I, I had a prolapse. What if I want to eat a lovely Sunday roast? I don't know. But <laughs> I had a massive poo. After them. These. Yeah. Have you ever swapped a cow for some magic beans? <laughs> <laughs> Joe. It's a hair transplant. Yeah, there we go. I should say it's, um, it's singular. Um... <laughs> Have you paid for one hair? I've loaded one on. hair. Yeah, I've loaded one hair onto the voucher. <laughs> <laughs> it's a belt, you know. Expensive, aren't they? Well, it's normally about fifteen grand for a full head of hair. So yeah. what have you put in a? What it's a hundred quid. I mean, that sort of appeals to me. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Tell you what I want is I want to be able to say it's a dinner party. I've had a hair transplant. Yeah. And then to go really, and I'll yeah. go yes, but only right. this hair. <laughs> <laughs> Points then, Greg. It's a final, so I'm not going to give anyone one point. That's good, isn't it? That is good, yes. You're yeah. going to give anyone two points? Yes. Just imagining I'm, I'm eating a lemon, no. <laughs> <laughs> what does it taste like? <laughs> yeah, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> two points. Two points to Sean. Uh, three points to the back massager. It was really nice. I really enjoyed it. But honestly, I've got one. OK. <laughs> um, <laughs> three points also oh. to uh, Jill in the Pyrenees. OK. I mean, unbelievably... The notion of having one hair transplanted <laughs> gets four points. Hey. Right? I just want it. And five points. Who doesn't like a lovely clear out? <laughs> five points hey. All right. Right. What have we got to start the final? Well, if they do the task correctly, absolutely nothing. <laughs> Hello, Lou. Hiya. You all right? Yes. Good stuff. And a razor, no less. This is suspicious. Little rubber. I used to collect rubbers. Why? It was before I had um, an iPhone. Oh. <laughs> One or the other, isn't it? Mm. Here we go. Completely erase this eraser. The fastest wins. Your time starts. Hold on, I'm just thinking. I can see that. Your time starts now. <laughs> no hesitation whatsoever, no. because you're a rubber specialist. <laughs> um, That's what they do. What has become of the rubber collection? It's still there. It's in a quality street tin. <laughs> Where? At my mum's house. <laughs> <laughs> she told me she's got 250. I've never used them to, to actually rub. No, no, God, that would soil them. No. We all know that. <laughs> Let's see some uh, erasing. OK, first to rub out the rubber are, and there's no easy way to say this, Joe and Sean. <laughs> well, I've made two and a load of little ones. Oh, my God. I'm going to sweat on here. Right, I'm going to go and um, have a little route around, see if I can find something. Um... Right, here we go. That's a bit more like, isn't it? Stand back, everyone. Here we go. Even done anything, that. No, it's still there, isn't it? <laughs> I've erased it. It's gone, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Has it gone? It's all gone. It's gone. She's completely gone. No sign of it. I can't see anywhere, no. <laughs> I mean, unbelievably, I really found myself admiring your technique. <laughs> it really thought, yeah, that's, Just... well, that's good thinking, that, getting some sandpaper. That'll really speed up the erasing process. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yes. Obviously, you use the classic old-school... Er Rubbing. ...eraser technique, mm. bored of it and tried to eviscerate it with fire. <laughs> <laughs> actually would burn. No, it didn't burn. No, it did, I know it didn't work, because Sean threw her rubber in her head. Yes. 
she took nine minutes 40. We did search for the eraser afterwards, couldn't find it, so it's gone. But oh, come on, it's not been erased, it's been chucked in a hedge. <laughs> uh, Joe took the same amount of time it takes me to fully clean you, 19 minutes and 32 seconds. <laughs> what a while. Let, let's see another one. Yes, uh, next up, two fellas, uh, an ITV one and an ITV tour. It's Paul and Ian. Completely erase this eraser. Your time starts now. You tell me when it's completely erased. I don't know if this will help. Completely erased? Yeah. Is it completely erased, Paul? It is. I'm glad I didn't eat it. <laughs> Are you, Paul, uh, under the impression that you erased that eraser? I removed it from society. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably still an eraser, isn't it? It's been erased. I, I'm not sure that is a ray. I really. I mean, I, you could see yours in a mush by your feet. Yeah, but it could no longer function as an eraser. It was no longer an eraser. Mine's just in a, underwater in a pipe. But it's still an eraser. It's, it's not. It's, it's not. It's lost not. It's, it's, at this point, no one's ever going to use that as an eraser again. They, if they really, really wanted to, they could find it and and it would still be intact as an eraser. And also, I think that erasing is the act of using it to. Where rub. the fuck has this come from? <laughs> I don't know. I, I just feel. I'm so fed up of putting in like loads and loads of just genuinely like physical effort into the task. <laughs> and then these other people found some swanky workaround. <laughs> they, like, put some fucking effort in. <laughs> I don't know where that's come from, I'm really sorry. I've been really nice so far. Let's just let all the rage simmer a bit. Hello, and welcome to the end of part one. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello! Welcome back to the Taskmaster Series 8 Grand Final. It's part two and it's exciting. So, to reflect this, Alex, can you please shout your recap at the very top of your lungs? <laughs> They are trying to erase an eraser as fast as possible. Louder! And Ian and Paul flushed it. More! Sean chucked it in a bush. Actually shouts! Joe made a mess! <laughs> and who's next? Lou Sanders! <laughs> you genuinely shout like a little old man. <laughs> Why is there no volume? I'm sorry, I did my best. Get away from my lord, you two! <laughs> Before we debate erasing anymore, let's have a look at Lou's, can we? Yes. Here's Lou's. Fastest wins. Your time starts now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? <laughs> it's just a sort of thing. It's taking longer than I thought. Can I get a drink, please? Yeah, what would you like? Oh, it tastes well. <laughs> Water and a juice, please. Mm. Finish. Oh, OK. Hold well on, I've stopped the clock. Where is it? <laughs> Open your mouth, Open your mouth. I can still see some of it. Oh! It's not completely erased, I'm afraid, Luke. Dude, that is very nice. <laughs> Where's it gone? Down the toilet. I'll fill the toilet. If she'd eaten it, would you have said she did? I think she changed its form. Yeah. yeah. But it's all set. she did was put it into a sewage system. So. No, but also, I changed you, she's changed, it's been digested, it'd be broken down. There's no way you could get those bits out and still use it as a rubber. Thank so, you. just so you know, it ended up in the toilet uh, in the hands of three of them. Lou took two minutes fifty. 34 seconds by Paul, 20 seconds by Ian. Well, this is unprecedented, what I'm about to do. The first points I will award according to the times. OK, so it'll be only one point to Joe. 
Yep. Two to Sean, three to Lou, four to Paul, five to Ian. Correct. But then... <gasps> I'm going to give Lou one bonus point for chewing up a rubber like a mad person. <laughs> but I'm going to give Joe a bonus of three points. <gasps> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Joe gets four points. Do you have another one ready? I do, and this one has legs. Ow! <laughs> Make yourself some tremendous pretend legs. You have five minutes to order up to five items from Alex. Once Alex has shopped for the items, you will have 20 minutes to make your tremendous legs and then demonstrate them. Most tremendous pretend legs wins. Your time starts now. Massive trousers. Some green face paint. Maybe I should try and make some sort of hinge. Some sexy stockings. Some stripy tights. Red and black? Purple and black. Sorry. Two child size snooker cues. Fireworks! Oh, there we go. Great, thanks a lot. Thanks, Thank Joe. Cheers. Bye. Bye bye. It's the most tremendous legs, right? Yes, most tremendous legs. Great in amount, scale, or intensity. Tremendous. Good. So here we go. This is Joe and Paul. I've never made anything with hinges before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ. Okay. Here we go. Hi there, Alex. Yeah, you doing okay? I'm fine, thank you, Joe. You look tired. I never felt better. Why? These little mothers down here. Two tremendous legs. Are they finished, Paul? Um, I might take them outside. <laughs> Ironically, I think the mistake I made was not going for an adult snooker cue. They're quite small, aren't they? Nonetheless. <laughs> oh! And I walk out to enjoy my evening out. I mean, is it possible for you to stand? Stand. I mean, at the moment you've been jumping. Oh, like, like... oh, on tiptoes, is it? Mm. Um. On the point, though. Oh, but... whoa! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's done it. And you can see that even when disaster does strike, the leg just fits straight back on. <sighs> Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Cheers. <laughs> I, hate, I hated that. I hated every fucking second of that. <laughs> for hinges and then didn't use them to make the knee. I just used well, them yeah. to... <laughs> you, you, you asked for hinges and then you were so frenetic. There was so much activity. It's like an episode of The A-Team for our older fans. It was incredible. There was so much industry going on. And then... <sighs> I mean, the legs were so rubbish. Yeah, and I then you really hurt yourself. Yeah. <laughs> no, I really genuinely felt quite sad that day after going home and having done that because I really thought I should be able to do a bit better than that. And I think all of us who were there felt sad and angry as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So far away from tremendous. Um, Paul, uh, any regrets about choosing child size snooker? <laughs> I read the task and I thought to myself, yeah. I am not going to come out of this task with any dignity whatsoever. <laughs> I'm dyspraxic, I'm very, virtually colourblind, I've got an injured shoulder, <laughs> and, and, and more than that, I'm an absolute dickhead. <laughs> That's not fair, you're not a dickhead. They looked more like legs than Joe's did, they were functional, they were able to very slowly kick a football. <laughs> I mean, it's an image that will haunt me for some time. <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> Should we see someone else? Yeah. OK. Uh, one of her shopping requests was spaghetti. It's Lou Sanders. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Get ready. They were more tremendous than, than what we've seen thus far, I think. <laughs> yeah. They were legs. Yeah. They, they, were, they were slightly more tremendous than the pool cues. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I think Paul's point is she didn't make the legs, she improved pre-existing legs. Yeah. Yeah. But you, what, 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 what was the task again? Uh, make. Make some pr tremendous legs. Yeah, mm. I made some normal yes. legs tremendous. tremendous. <laughs> they did look quite tremendous. I think it was surprising yep. to you. see them up there. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> He'd raise an eyebrow. <laughs> they were the most tremendous legs I've seen, I've seen thus far. Look, we're halfway through the final. Not only will someone win the Taskmaster trophy, but someone will also go home with a squatting toilet stool. Win, win, bye bye. the start of part three here in the Taskmaster final. Where were we, Alex? Legs is where we were and where we still are. Legs. So far, we've discovered that Paul Sinha thinks the most <laughs> tremendous legs imaginable are a smaller, <laughs> less mobile version of his own. <laughs> now for Sean with a slightly higher production value version. Here we go. <laughs> Mine was better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The production, the, uh, the whole concept was wonderful. I loved your tremendous legs. I'm going to hand out points pretty quickly. After seeing Ian. Ian. <laughs> <laughs> so, So, um, oh, how's your day been? Good, thank you. Anything uh, interesting? <laughs> your ankle. I'm worried about your... <laughs> I've broken both ah! ah! <laughs> my ankles. Not your new shoes. Thank you very much. They're um, from. <laughs> Just... Did we do that? Just fancy. <laughs> oh, my back. My back. <laughs> We're off to the caravan. Why, <laughs> why did you hamper yourself with, with, with fake arms? I got carried away. <laughs> the thing about this, you've not, you don't see it from another person's point of view. I f was convinced I'd won this time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm barefooted, stood on stainless steel, with my hands zipped into my body. Yeah. <laughs> and then I gaffer taped a mannequin hand onto each side. <laughs> They were both left hands. <laughs> so we I barely noticed. I, I, well, I, don't, I put gloves on them so you wouldn't. <laughs> By the point I was doing that, the legs had really become an afterthought. As a character, you look like a pretty cool guy to hang out with. Oh, we had a lovely time. <laughs> a lovely time on the road. a lovely old sway. I know. Lovely <laughs> slow sway. Yeah. I'm going to score it really quickly. Are you? Yeah. Guess who's in last? <laughs> One point for Joe. Thank you. Um, I, I want to give this a hundred bonus points, but <laughs> <laughs> but if I mark them as just tremendous legs, unfortunately, I have to give the children Snoopy Q. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, I have to give them two points. I mean, he's done well to get two there. Two points to yeah, Paul. He's done really well. Unbelievable. I want to hang out with him, but I don't think his legs are that tremendous. <laughs> but I will give um, clumpy, swaying. <laughs> 
clumsy man. Three points. Three points to Ian. Obviously, I want to roller skate on top of a caravan for one foot. Louis, Lou gets four points. Louis, Lou, four and, points. I mean, who can deny the production of Sean Gibson? Five points. There. <laughs> Oh, dear me. <laughs> Little scoreboard update, please. OK, uh, it's tight at the bottom, as Mummy used to say. <laughs> uh... <laughs> it's a three-way tie at the bottom. Joe, Paul and Sean all have nine. Then Lou has 11, but in the lead with 13 points, it's Ian Sterling! Yay! <laughs> Please can we have one more, just one more? I have exactly one more task, the last video task of the series, I'm afraid, but it does involve some very dangerous parking and a bubble hat. It's a long way. Pardon? It's a long way. Yes? I'm not very good at running. You don't have to run. <laughs> I've got a look here. Follow the instructions on the signs and park this buggy in the parking bay. You have a maximum of ten minutes to prepare your journey, during which you may not move any of the items on the course. Your journey must start from where the buggy is now. That's going to be easy, no? Also, you must be wearing this blindfold correctly at all times during your journey. Ah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Most accurate journey wins. Your preparation time starts now. What? Right, so let's have a look at these um, instructions. Do knock these bells off. High five him. Do not knock these bells off. So I've got to drive that blindfolded and do them things? Yes, please. Good luck. I'm just going to have a little go on this. Woo! Oh, Jesus. I mean, absolute carnage <laughs> <laughs> from you before the blindfolds got on. Yeah. And you know how I knew that that was a genuine panic? Cos the old man voice came out of <laughs> <laughs> well, I, mean, I can't. I can't wait to see this. We've grouped these two together already today, but now it's their last chance to truly prove themselves. It's Joe and Paul again. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, you've got eight more minutes to prepare. Eight, oh, eight more to prepare. Okay. Uh... Right, I'm going to administer the blindfold system. Okay. There one. Wow. Can you see anything, Paul? No. Good luck. Thank you. I'm going to go. <laughs> Fuck it up. Was that the mannequin? Fuck. <laughs> Is that a high five? Oh, I thought I had a good idea here. Where are the bells? Oh, God! Oh. I think it goes without saying that I don't really know where I am. Where do you think you are? I'd like to think that the parking bay is there. Right. You've got a plan B, Paul. Um, Careful. Brilliant. Not as big as I thought it was. What are you looking for at the moment, Paul? The bike again. <laughs> Lost the bike again. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna park it now. Careful, Paul! Whoa, whoa, whoa. I was nearly there. Yeah. Could be anywhere. 
I've stopped now. I've finished the journey. That's not too bad. <laughs> Can I ask what, what the strategy was with uh, leaving the buggy? My first mistake was thinking that I was competent enough to drive somewhere near the bells, <laughs> get out of the thing, walk out and knock the bells off with my own hands. But somehow or another, I just fucked it up from the word go. <laughs> Well, we all enjoyed watching him walk around the space. <laughs> and I was thinking, he's not going to remember where that buggy is. <laughs> Delightful. He found it, but unfortunately, tried to get on the front instead of... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Joe, I thought you would employ a more logical system rather than just, OK, I think I've got the measure of this, let's try it hard. You went full speed. You had your hazards on? <laughs> hazards on. Well, my thinking was, if you put your hazards on, you can do literally whatever you want. <laughs> I did say afterwards, that was bloody brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> it was. It was good. Here it is, the last break of the series. Alex, I'd like to take this opportunity to apologise, because just before the show record, I genuinely cut your trousers in half. <laughs> now, I know you think this is a joke. I went into your dressing room and I got your trousers that you're wearing to the party tonight and I cut them in half with a big pair of scissors. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the best thing I've ever done. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Oh! Yeah, they are my actual trousers, so... <laughs> Here's a break. OK. <laughs> Hello, welcome back. Here we are, then, the final part of the series. I can't quite believe it. Can you, Alex? Yes, I can. But there's still... <laughs> there's still a task to finish, Greg. They've been parking a buggy badly. And lastly, we're going to see Ian, Sean and Lou. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, stop. Jingle. One elephant, two elephants, three elephants. Oh, I forgot my number count in there. OK, so if you stand by the parking lot, emitting a noise... So I'll blow the whistle every five to seven seconds. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Ten, eleven, twelve. They're all twelve centimetres apart. I might go and get a big stick. Do whatever you want. One elephant, two elephant, three elephant. Hello? <laughs> but it was three... It was three elephants! I just keep walking. <laughs> what, what's that? That's a camera. <laughs> oh, I, I shouldn't have got out of the truck. <laughs> Eleven, twelve. Okay. 14, 15. <laughs> oh. Yes! Come on! Get off. <laughs> Careful! Ooh! Ooh! Ah. <laughs> High five! Am I the wrong side? This is terrible! <laughs> Okay. Oh, don't do this again. Oh, no. Yes! Nine, ten, eleven. I'll just not worry about the other bells, OK? OK. OK, so what's that, then? So I think I'm just going to back out here. Ooh.
absolute carnage. <laughs> I would say getting me to whistle in the parking bay did mean she got to the parking bay eventually. Yeah. Ah, OK. She did so there was create a, some system. There was a system. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good, cos I'd hate for you to damage the truck. <laughs> <laughs> I think the thing that's worth mentioning is that no-one else took over ten minutes. She took half an hour. <laughs> because I wanted to get it right. Yeah. The elephant system. You were very passionate about it. Elephants. I've seen people say elephants before. I've seen people say elephants before. Yeah. 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 Oh, a couple of times, yeah. Yeah, we went to that thing, didn't we? Yeah, the old... Uh... Elephant conference. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sean. What was your system? Um, counting in centimetres. <laughs> <laughs> And I was amazed to find out that they were all 12 centimetres. <laughs> <laughs> it looks different. It does look different. <laughs> and we can see some lovely interpretive dance as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't need to hand out points, do I? No, not yet. I'm going to show you the graphics of how accurate their journey is, and that should speak for itself. I've plotted Joe's journey first. So he went a bit like this. You see bottom left, he's aiming for the bottom right. Started well. <laughs> There's some good and bad there. I've drawn a penis there. <laughs> <laughs> Anything with that? <laughs> Paul next. <laughs> I've made the line solid when he abandoned the <laughs> truck. <laughs> Back in. <laughs> Back out. <laughs> and he's off. Yeah. <laughs> Ian next. I think you'll be quite impressed by Ian's journey. Pretty smooth. Look at that. Wow. Textbook stuff. Oh, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> lovely. Yeah. Sean's wasn't dissimilar, but again, she abandoned the truck and that's where it got less accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Good ending, though. Good Not ending. Bad. <laughs> Lou? Yeah, finally, all 30 minutes of Lou's journey. <laughs> Who was best? Oh, Ian Sterling definitely was the best. Get five points. Five points. <laughs> Presumably, Sean was the next one. Sean definitely four. Four points. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's three, two, one. Joe Paul Lou. Joe Paul Lou was definitely the least accurate. So, uh, <laughs> three points, two points, one point for Lou. Okay, everyone, it saddens me to ask this, but could you please make your way to the stage for the final task of the series? <laughs> Hi, lovely ponytail boy. Oh, hi, ponytail man. Uh, who's going to read the final task of the series out? Lou Sanders. OK. Yeah, right way up. Um, correctly wearing these goggles and with your eyes open at all times, retrieve your duck. You must stand on your spot and hold the stick by the handle. You must stay standing on your spot throughout the task. First is to hold the duck in their hands above their head. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> wins. You have a maximum of three minutes. This doesn't seem very hard. I wonder what those goggles do. I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> OK. When I blow the whistle, place your goggles over your eyes and retrieve your ducks. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> it turns everything upside down! Whoops! Oh, that is horrible. <laughs> hard. <laughs> Lou, you must stay on your spot. I'm on my spot, aren't I? Well, you're, some of you's on the spot. Can you...? OK. How's it going, Sean? I feel up. <laughs> Oh. Oh. It might be all right. Fuck off! Fuck off! Fuck off! <laughs> Come on, Chuck. That is not your duck, Lou. That is... <laughs> Come on, Joe. <laughs> That's it, Joe. That's it. Oh. 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 It could be Paul! Only Paul's is remaining. No! Oh. Oh. OK. Stay on your spot. Stay on your spot. My bum. Yes, I've covered that up. <laughs> do you have to catch it with the hook? No, do whatever you want. Oh! Yay! Yay!
take off your goggles. Paul, you're the only one not sitting on the floor now, for some reason. <laughs> but, but you don't have to sit on the floor. No one ever. <laughs> Good. Come down, we'll add that to the final scores. Messy old business, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, three of the contestants did not retrieve the duck within the time. So we can safely say zero points. I'm afraid so, to those three, and that is to Lou, Paul and to Sean. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very sorry to say, Ian got Joe's duck and Joe got Ian's duck. Oh! I want you to greet this with a huge round of applause because I do think it's sort of in keeping with the entire programme that in the final task, of Series 8 <laughs> of Taskmaster, every single contestant has scored no points! <laughs> it does mean, though, that there is a clear and outright winner, five points ahead of the rest, that is Mr Ian Stolley! Ian Stolley! Back the things that are going to make your life better. Ian Sterling! <laughs> it's trophy time! <laughs> Little Alex Hall. Please. Reveal the final results. Okay. I think you're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> Paul ended up on 136 points in fifth place. Paul Sinar. <laughs> Just above him. On 143, seven points above was Sean Gibson. <laughs> and up we go again. Seven points higher with 150. Joe Thomas. <laughs> And here we go, with 156 points, in second place, Mr Ian Sterling. <laughs> Which means, with 164 points, the winner was Lou Sanders! <laughs> there is your Series 8 Taskmaster champion, Lou Sanders! for watching. Thank you to our colossal cast and the smallest hint of appreciation to little Alex Hall. Oh! <laughs> Mainly, though, well done again to our Series 8 champion, Lou Sanders! <laughs> Who will be the next champion? <laughs> See you next time to find out. For more Taskmaster, subscribe now!